uh, Wednesday, April 27th. It is 8, eight o'clock. Um, Zoom meeting information, uh, let's see here. Roll call. Uh, Alderman Brian Johnson. Uh, Alex Zacharias here. Uh, Chuck Yang. Here. Kent Hutchinson. Present. Katie. Also here. Uh, Leah Zahn representatives. Uh, Beth Lemke. Here. Uh, Timothy Perlowitz. Here. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Um, Rizzo <laughs> Peguero Almonte. All right. Uh, next on our item is approval of the agenda. Approval of the agenda for April 27, 2022. Motion to approve. Can I get Seconded. a second? Seconded. Perfect. Uh, can uh, for all those that approve, say yay. 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 All those against. Perfect. Uh, regular business. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Approval uh, of minutes. Approval of the minutes from the January 26, <clears throat> 22 meeting. Motion to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Hey. Aye. All, all those against? All right. Regular business. Election uh, of chair of the Green Bay Public Arts Commission. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Alec. I'll second it. And I, I'd like to nominate Katie. Uh, I must <laughs> respectfully decline. Thank you. What about Chuck? Chuck, do you have any interest? I thought about it, but unfortunately, um, with the role that I'm in now, I would have to decline. Okay, well, what I, what I want to propose then is for Alex Zacharias chair and for Chuck Yang to be vice chair. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, after I'd uh, talked to a few people about what the vice chair does and the uh, role, uh, it's a little bit more lenient. Um, I'd be fine with that. <clears throat> Thanks, Katie, for setting me up. Uh, all right, I, I, I was. Uh, I, I just wanted to leave. I, I'm always looking for opportunities to leave this position open for other folks, and I've been doing this kind. So, that, but I'd be glad to redo it again. But just so you know, that's what I hope to do for the. You know, I'll be happy to serve. Just not at this time. Okay. All right. Got you. It's recorded. Um, <laughs> Cheryl, do we have to? I'm, oh, it's been oh, a while we, since we've <clears throat> done done elections. But correct me if I'm wrong. We have to announce it, announce the nominations three times, and then. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, right, Alex. I mean, you've asked for nominations. We've had two, so I just want to ask one more time for nominations, and then. It sounds like Kent made a motion. So if you just want to ask one more time if there are any other nominations. Are there any other nominations? No surprises there, right? <laughs> All right. So Kent, Kent made the motion for um, Alex and then Katie, um, no, Chuck as the vice chair. And we just need a second to that. Second. For, um, all those that approve? Aye. 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 All those against? All right. So move. Hey. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chuck. All right. Uh, uh, next item, consideration with possible action to develop a new Green Bay Public Arts Commission liaison position to represent Oneida Nation Arts. Laura? Yes. So we currently have five commissioners and three liaison positions. Our liaison positions currently focus on visual arts, performing arts, and the humanities. Um, a while back, Kent had actually made the suggestion that we include Oneida Nation um, as a liaison representative. So 
it gets a little bit interesting with commissioners versus liaisons, but the, the gist of it is that commissioners can vote on items, they have the power to vote, whereas liaisons are, are welcome to the table, they're welcome to provide input, but ultimately they do not have a vote on, on items that we discuss. So uh, with the, the partnership that the city and Oneida Nation has, uh, I feel it's a good choice to incorporate Oneida Nation Arts as, as a liaison representative to this body. Well said, Laura. I agree. And I really like this because, uh, you know, we, we do land acknowledgements here. We're actually doing something and, and actually right in the community. So. Could we similarly reach out to the Menominee Nation? We could. I, th I think we could, though. I, someone from the Menominee Nation, um, I, I suppose people from Menominee, how, how, how do you think we would... Um, govern that because the Menominee Nation like headquarters is, is kind of far away. Um, just going back to the land acknowledgement, this is the ancestral land of the Menominee Nation and there are currently Menominee members in, in the area living sure. and working. Um, I, maybe I should look into that and talk more about what that would look like specifically. So back to the Oneida liaison that makes that thank you for looking into that Katie though that that was an oversight on my part so yes I, I think that would be important um, do, do we have to make a motion or we did it already no we need to make a motion I'll make a motion okay. to uh, approve the uh, new position of a liaison to represent the United Nations seconded all those in favor aye aye, aye. all those against all right. Uh, item number three, consideration with possible action to select final artworks and designate artwork placement for the rotating art program 2022-2023 season. Yes. So it feels like we just did this not that long ago, but that, <laughs> that is the nature of a annual program. Um, we received 15 submissions from seven artists. Um, it's very similar to what we had received last year and in previous years of running the program. Um, prior to this meeting, I gave you guys all some homework to review the, the artwork submissions and the um, artist resumes and, and all of the materials that our artists have submitted uh, and tabulate initial scores to get the conversation going. Um, based on the scores that I received, I do have um, our top six. Um, some ties are included, so it's a little bit more than actual six. But we also have a number of neighborhood associations present and um, artists, I believe, are, are also at the meeting. If I don't know if you'd like to go over the scores first and then open the floor, or if you'd like to open the floor for discussion um, and then review the scores. I th I'd I like to, Katie. oh yeah, go I'm ahead, sorry. Katie, I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say scores first, then open the floor, but Ken, okay. it sounded like you were gonna go in the opposite direction. <laughs> yes, that way um, we would just be able to give everybody, you know, who wants like a few minutes to say anything about their piece ahead of time. The scores wouldn't change, um, but, that was just my thought. And I can pull the, the pieces up. I'll share my screen so that we won't see one another. At least I won't see you guys. But um, visually, you can see what, what pieces we are discussing, if that helps, too. Um, so motion to open the floor. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make the motion. And uh, Katie, if you want to have a conversation of why that's not a good idea, we'll totally open to it. Not at all. Let's okay. I second that motion. Let's do it. All right. Um, uh, all those in favor? Right? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? All right. Um, who do we want to introduce? Or who wants to speak? Um, any artists?
maybe if there's an artist that wants to speak, you can raise your hand on the Zoom or you can just raise your hand. And then Laura, could you facilitate that? I believe Stephanie, our gatekeeper, can assist with hands raised, but I will also keep an eye open. Are you seeing my screen with the, the slide yes. from the packet? Yes, okay. we are. Beautiful. I see no hands at the moment. Come on, artist. This is your chance. We would love to hear from you. Do we have any neighborhoods that are, are interested? I also received um, some input from neighborhoods um, who were not able to, to make it this morning, but that might be more pertinent once we get into the location decision. Um, yeah, so artists, if you're, um, if you're here and you want to mention a few things about your, about your piece, we'll give you a few minutes just to really briefly talk about your uh, artwork. Uh, this is the time. Um, can I make a sort of point of order or raise a point um, about inviting artists to speak to their work? We have before us images of the work with details about the materials and the installation. We have artist resumes. Uh, to invite further information privileges people who are able to attend this meeting while well, we have already had a, a submission process. So I would like to respectfully suggest that we make our decisions based on a uniform submission and not um, in-person kind of additional kind of here's the story i mean i would like to hear from these artists personally because i like hearing from artists but i think i think we have the information we need to make solid decisions okay yeah that makes I'm sense i'm also not seeing any artists uh raising hands <laughs> so. yeah <laughs> uh, so uh, laura i guess we can go through the process mm -hmm. do you want to uh so we could either close the floor, oh, I see. review the artwork, then open it again for neighborhoods, or let neighborhoods talk now, close the floor, and then go through the scoring. Yes, My, I see Cheryl's hand up. All right, have the neighborhood, have the president seen these pieces? Yes, I, I emailed okay. the active neighborhood associations in the area. Um, I received input from two neighborhoods, and I believe we have two other neighborhoods Couple present. Okay, today. Um, yep. Let's, let me, I'd like to make a motion to leave the floor open so we can hear from neighborhoods while we have open floor. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to second that? Well, the floor is already open, so we could just leave it oh. open. Oh. Yeah. I will share the scores. Um, so based on the scores that I received, and like I said when I handed out the homework, um, these scores really are just a baseline to get the conversation going and see where, where we're at. Um, then it kind of gets in the opportunity of discussing, well, I think the benefits of blah, blah, blah outweigh this piece compared to that. So based on the scores that I received, um, we have our top six pieces. Um, number six has a tie score between um, tree branches and window. Um, so these are, are how our, our initial pieces have laid out based on the scores received. One thing that I would like to suggest to this group that I made a point of noting with the scores I sent to Laura is something we've done in the past with the Rotating Arts Program is we prioritized um, pieces from different artists. So if one, art, one artwork was selected by a single artist that had supplied to and they scored well, that we just select one of those uh, pieces. So it would be one piece per artist, which I'd like to also suggest we follow for this, um, for today. Is that a motion or? or... It's a suggestion and I'd like okay. to get, gather your feedback from the rest of the liaisons and commissioners, just because um, one thing that I noted is that the GBPAC isn't like, we're not necessarily here to showcase the best art. We're, we're providing opportunities to as many artists to tell as many stories as we can. So uh, therefore, you know, over representing a singular artist, uh, I think would, would, would go in the face of that. That's my suggestion. I agree. I, I think if that's something we want to do, then maybe we should tell artists that up front. Um, also, I hear you can, I think like more places at the table for more people is a good um, driving force. 
However, um, the locations are scattered throughout the city. So even if we did have two sculptures by the same artist, it, it, it's not like we're blanketing the city with their work. I mean, it's two kind of oh. discrete locations. True, but we're providing the funding and opportunity to one person rather than two then if we have no that's my okay. thought sure I, yeah I, I think that's fair uh, so at this point is this uh, a motion uh, no it, it's a suggestion it's a suggest okay yeah I can't really see those uh, the scores that well on my little iPhone is is that the case do we have any that are the same artist Laura we have two looks like Yes. Um, artist B has two pieces selected, and Artist C has two pieces oh, this, selected. Okay. okay. And I did, since you, you had sent that email about interest in representing as many artists as possible, I did go through the scores, and I pulled out the, the top choice per art. If an artist submitted multiple pieces, I, I pulled the piece that all of you had scored the highest from that artist. Um, so I can find those really quick and share that if you would like. Yes, please. Thank you, Laura. Of course okay. you thought of that. I have to try and think of as many things that you might throw at me as possible so that I'm not stressed in the meeting. Just give me a moment, though. While she's doing that, while Laura's doing that, um, thank you so much to all the artists. If you're if you're viewing or if, if you're not, this this was a really impressive lot, and I'm really proud of what was put forward to us. So thank you everybody for participating. Yes. How's everybody else feeling about that? Uh, Kelly, or I'm sorry, Katie and Alex, how are, are you piece per artist? Because I, I think we can definitely put that on the front end and let artists know that we'll select one of their pieces. Um, that's just something we haven't done yet. So that was a good suggestion, but what are your thoughts? Well, well one thing I noticed is like the B artist, you know, has a piece that's ranked two and then a piece that's tied for six. So I think in that case, that could be a deciding factor. Right, this person already has its ranked highly, so we would just default to the the tie would go to the person who already hasn't been selected. So I think that's a helpful yeah. way to think about it. Right, it's true. Does, do we need to put this verbiage in our? Uh, do we have to incorporate this verbiage in in, in PAC? You know, and and yeah. In our, Okay. I think I think that would definitely go as Katie suggested. It would go into the request for proposal, so that artists, you know, if we want to make that like a hard line, like that we accept one piece of art per artist, then we we should admit front end. We haven't done that yet, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah, Cheryl, would they be able to add that onto this agenda item today, or would I just bring that to the next meeting with an updated RFP with the? the intent of having one submission per artist does the rfp does the rfp state that we're definitely taking the top vote getters from the committee or is it up to the pac to decide on the pieces it's up to the pac to decide this is the scores are a tool for the pac to okay. to make their decision but the scores artists are presented the the categories that the pac Yep. produces the scores from so they know that they're going to be reviewing for safety and and unique and and all of those items that that you guys had scored these on so but really there's... as a result as a result of this meeting this committee may choose um, pieces that aren't even top ranked in other words if that you know going through this process so i think you're okay with that but it certainly would be a good idea moving forward next year in the rfp to place that in there that 
look, we're going to look for one piece per artist. I'll I'll bring an updated RFP for the wrap yeah. program. Okay. Um, are you seeing my screen now? Yes. So uh, these are how the scores divvied out, um, accounting for one piece per artist, um, and they they are ranked based on the scores, and then having one piece per artist. I, I repeated myself. What about C? Uh, Laura, it looks like C1 and C2 are... I forgot to remove that one. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay. Good catch. Yes, that looks good to me. I am shocked that the buzz did not get the respect it deserves. And I think less <laughs> of all of you. <laughs> oh, that was a tricky decision for me too, but I'm picking the crap. Yeah, we're buzz killers. Ooh, good one out. <laughs> so, I mean, given the conversation we've just had, is, is it the will of the group that we decide based on these numbers? I think so like um we can make a motion to accept these pieces and then we have the conversation of where they're going to be located we're going to have to cut number seven then because i only have six six spaces all right so knowing that unfortunately one one needs to be cut if only we had six artists that submitted then we would have no hard feelings one other uh, thought that I had when I was reviewing is that we've had repeating artists and there's nothing wrong with that. However, if we're talking about representation, um, there have been artists that have been in rotating arts programs. Um, and I'm not sure the artist who is, who is F has been represented before. Um, however, I, I believe the artist who is C, we had one of their pieces uh, in the previous year, or the current year, rather. So if we want to think about representation, we'd want to include F and not include C. Um, that's just a point that I thought of. We've actually had work from artist C and artist E. How about okay. F? No, we have not had F participate in the program in the past. Because F is the one currently on the chopping block, right? Yep. Right. Does anybody else have feelings about that, liaisons or commissioners? I mean, I'm a little inclined to go by the numbers. Like, we, you know, we do want to bring a diversity of voices, but we also want to bring excellent art to these neighborhoods. And so if, you know, objectively we all kind of favored C over F, I don't, I don't really have a dog in this fight, but. Okay. Yeah. I, I think we should go by the numbers um, that we've chosen. So that's my opinion. <clears throat> I'm inclined to agree, but I think this is also one of those times where Maybe we can also listen to what the neighborhood associations are going to say, or if they have any thought in it, which may help us decide on if we're going to actual numbers or if we're going to change it and say put seven in instead of three. Um. Before we ask the neighborhoods, I would just like to say I'd, I'd like to include seven uh, because that person has not been in, uh, represented here. And um, also that I think is there is a representation in case they haven't made yet so that this would actually be a commissioning of a, a piece that they would have in their portfolio and be able to sell moving forward. So, um, and I think the C2 is already existing. So uh, this would be the actual, you know, development of a new piece of artwork. So my, my recommendation was to select F uh, and not select C. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, um, since we're, we're adding additional um, 
intent and po possibly verbiage to our um, to what we have now. I'm wondering if this is something that we should consider for next time, as far as uh, uh, actually inputting that verbiage into the application. I don't know what I just said, but I think I, I said what I'm saying is. Alex, I think you're getting at the idea that we would get preference to new artists. Everyone is welcome to apply, but we would prioritize people who have not previously shown work through this program. Yes. Laura, do you have any thoughts about that? I agree. I think based on what information we have already shared with artists, um, we should, and knowing that we have the intent to to update the program and, and improve it, I think we should stick true to, to how it's been presented currently. And I, I think in addition to including some sort of language in the updated RFP saying that we'll, we'll have preference on, on um, highlighting as many artists as possible, I think we also might wanna consider including something along the lines of if, if you've already participated in the program the previous year, like you need to wait a year to reapply. So, something like that, I think might be of interest. But I think we should stick to to the language that we have currently and and stick to the scores that that we've tabulated. I like the, the flexibility. Uh, go the ahead. Only Alex. Reason, the only reason I'm feeling uh, it just I don't I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't feel right, you know, uh, making changes on the fly right now. Uh, uh, but to have that in consideration. Is well, we're not beholden to anything right now. Um, like the, the way it sits right now is like the, the commission has the ability to choose whatever we want. So we could we could choose this based on the ideas that the commission has right now. We're, we're not obligated to the, uh, to choose the top scoring or the you know sure. based on any indices at all so uh preference like i don't want to lock us into any you know ways to have to select make selections moving forward but preference i think is good uh like i like that we can we have the option to choose f over c and have that conversation um and if it's not f then that's fine um, but I like having the, the flexibility. I think that the, it beholdens, it's beholden to the, to have the flexibility to be able to choose what, what we want. Um, and if the artist is here, like, you know, that wants to mention, maybe we could, we could ask if either artist from C or F is here. Tim uh, Perlowitz, did you have something to say? I, th I think I saw your hand went up a while back ago. Yeah, thank you. The only concern I have, I, I don't disagree with Kent's idea of inclusion, but the, the concern I would have is I believe the original scoring had C with two pieces of art included, and this process by numeric elimination would remove all pieces of art from C. Is that, I believe that's the original scoring versus the modified mm -hmm. scoring. So it just seems like as this collective body sort of agreed that C should be part of this, or actually twice, by elimination of the new scoring system would be removing them completely. Um, it's good perspective. I'm not saying I don't disagree with the, the concept, and I think you're, you're right. The ability of inclusion is, is great. I just think that this process would really directly impact that artist who initially was, again, going to get, have two pieces of work selected versus now having zero. That's a good point. Yeah, we really wanted one of those, didn't we? I do agree with Kent on, you know, using the language for preference, but I would not want to pigeonhole ourselves into it simply because here we only have three artists that submit three pieces, and so we can't select six different artists. And now, now we pigeonhole ourselves by saying that we have to select six. So, but I agree. It's just the future verbiage can be um, included to talk about preference, but not really saying that we have to be beholden to uh, any certain method of choosing as 
what we currently are doing. Also, this step puts you one step closer to that inclusivity mindset by expanding the number of pieces that were reviewed. So I think this is a, a good first step into that process too. So what I'm hearing is, uh, is, is this a vote um, kind of thing or? Yeah, you might no, want to have a motion to, maybe the motion should be to approve the, the items. Top six. Number. Top six. Yep. We should uh, close, should the we floor. close the floor. <laughs> oh, but you uh, don't have any associations yet, right? Um, so you might want to leave the floor open. Okay, yes. And can I make a, uh, a question? Is the, the uh, neighborhoods here to weigh in on the artwork themselves or on the location of the artwork? That's what I thought they were, but I could be wrong. They weighed in on um, preference of artwork for their neighborhood. So uh, um, find that quick and share that with you from what I did receive, but we can hear from the neighborhoods that are present right now while I've looked at that. Raised. There's no park, uh, neighborhood association. Is the time for us now? Yes. Okay. Um, well, two two of the pieces that we were looking at have already been eliminated. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I know we did, uh, the, the last preference that we were looking at was window for our our uh, neighborhood. They're all good. I do like the idea of, I mean, I know I can't vote anything, but I do like the idea of, of uh, guys having that you brought up that sounds, that sounds good and fair, especially when there are so many artists out there who have not. And um, it would be great to know that. Are you interested in not only the ones that have been showing up? But we want numbers D4. Uh, <laughs> We're looking at the uh, tree branches and the wing. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that's preference for Perkins Park? Or uh, Nick Seymour Park? Okay, sorry. I, I didn't hear that, Tanya. What was your preference for Seymour Park? Which one? B4. That's the last one on the roster that we were interested in. And, you know, uh, it is an open window to our neighborhood. You know, and especially with the growth that's going on now, that seems to be an ideal. Tanya, um, well, was any of the ones that were selected in the top six one of your preferences for your uh, neighborhood? Uh, preferences were um, before wings. I think. And two, two okay. I think B2 she branches. liked number five. Yes. Five. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Laura, in the past, have we have we done this? I mean, I like the conversation, but like, I guess we're wondering how we would move forward. So uh, there's a there's a preference for number five for Perkins Park. We can Seymour can, Park. Oh, I'm sorry, Seymour Park. We could, I think we could do that, couldn't we? There's yes. Last raised. year, what we did is we we held a vote to select the six pieces. Right. Then we we opened the floor based on the six that we had then. Of, okay, now where are we going to place these six? And then we brought neighborhood input into That's, play. That, I think that makes more sense to me uh, be, because mm -hmm. otherwise we're opening up. I mean, let's do one thing at a time. So I would suggest we move forward doing that. Yep. We still uh, so, waiting to speak. Just wanted to. Um, I wasn't quite sure what we were talking about or what we were speaking to, but if... I also forgot. Can you please say your name and info for the record? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, Shelby Waller, 817 South Ashland Avenue. I'm the Tank Park Association president.
Go ahead, Shelby. Oh, yeah. Um, I would just wanted to say that um, I appreciate the program and as far as selection for the tank park space for art to go. Um, I'm currently a one-man committee, so <laughs> uh, we decided that um, something <laughs> larger and with broader lines would be better because that art is generally seen from a driving car. <laughs> so. Um, mm-hmm. Just to keep that in mind, that's all. No other true preference. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So um, do we continue the conversation or we close the floor? Motion to close the floor. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? All right. What's next, Laura? We, I think we need a motion to select the artwork. So um, I'll make the motion to select the top six that are on the screen right now. Can we get a second? Second. Can I make a friendly amendment? Yes. Yeah. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to swap seven and three based on the feedback we had from Shelby about uh, work being seen from a large car or from a moving car. And, and given the conversations we previously had. So my friendly amendment is to take the top six, but switch three and seven. So not really the top six. So we'd take away C? We would. If, so, we, if, we, uh, if the, the body approves the friendly amendment. I, re- I think I would have agreed. However, Tim, when Tim mentioned that um, C had scored high, like both, both C items had scored very high, um, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if we can swap. I, I, yeah, that, that would be kind of, we wanted right, So that. my understanding is that if you have hesitations about the friendly amendment, then it's not a friendly amendment. We, it doesn't get added automatically. We would have to discuss it and um, vote on it, whether or not to add it. And then we can go back to the motion as listed. Well, that think, is my yeah, if there's a motion on the floor, then we have a discussion about that motion. So this would be the discussion right now. So the discussion right, right now is adding the friendly amendments. Right. Is, is that a vote? No. Uh, well, okay. I, I think Ted has to accept that amendment. As the person who made the motion, he has to accept the amendment to that motion on the amendment. And if Kent says, no, I prefer not to have that, then you go, you've got the motion and the second on the floor. You can have discussion then, and then you vote on that. That's okay. what I'm thinking. Okay, so we can't have a discussion about that right now. I just have to say yes or no. Well, you already have a motion and a second, so you're discussing that. You've discussed that already right. one time before. Discuss that. Um, right. if, you, if you agree, Kent, you could accept that amendment. Mm-hmm. and swap them out otherwise as it, you can say i really re- prefer not to and it's i am fine so, to do that yeah and i and, and i'm so on the fence because before i really i really liked the idea of accepting number seven because it's not a sculpture and that person hasn't uh been in our rap program before so i really want to bring kristen in um you know and, and no fault to see because i think that person's work is very great and we've had them in the past um so i'm i'm really on the, about this uh so if if anybody else wants to you know is, the is that your preference with you can't you gotta you gotta up or down <laughs> it dude just, okay just, either either decision is good but i think we need to move forward um oh geez no and we could always we, we, and we could always revisit this conversation correct i think we gotta go with it don't we like well yeah. it's time to make i mean right i mean i think you i feel like you guys have discussed this once already i i didn't feel like there was i don't know i didn't feel like there was support for that swap just from listening to the discussion but i see tim has his hand up um i'm still new to the process being you know day nope. one minute 30 but am i allowed to to yes you are offer? yep to me i think if we were to make a swap I, I would say it would make more sense at this point, I think because it sees dual placement within the, the scoring to switch six and seven mm-hmm. because they're the bottom two and we're saying seven would maybe better fit a request from the Neighborhood Association because they are the bottom two vote getters within the system. 
it wouldn't disenfranchise C who had initially two pieces of art selected and it would then move the bottom slightly around. How do you feel about that, Katie? Well, I think it's a great idea, but the, again, according to Robert's rules, Kent, you need to decide up or down on my friendly amendment. And then I think we could take from Tim that as a different friendly amendment. Um, and I, again, I think it's all gravy. We're bringing art <laughs> to public places. Like, you know, we can go wrong, but we need to go forward. So you have to, I, I, it sounds like Kent, why don't you go ahead and decline my friendly amendment and then we can kind of move to next steps like what Tim okay. proposed or sure. or something else. Are you in favor of what Tim, but that's my question to you because I can have that conversation with you right now. Are you in favor of- I mean, I'll of just tell you all I have in my heart. Like I, I kind of love that Mr. Krabs and the Buzz are made with found materials and that it's from someone who's been working as a, a body mechanic. So yeah. that's a whole different conversation about kind of who we want to bring to the table. Again, I'm, I think it's all good. Okay, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to decline your recommendation, Katie, and um, I'm just going to maintain the motion that I had, the top six. And then, so, Chuck, are you going to second that again? I'll second it again. Okay. Uh, um, and all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Um, do we close the floor now? Um, well, are you going to, I think now you're going to move into the placement of them okay. at different sites, but you, I think I, I, it's hard to tell. Laura, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. I just, I can't see you on my screen. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak? It sounds like we've heard from both the associations and I, think I don't we've, know if anyone else is there. We closed the floor, didn't we? We did oh, close nice. the floor. Oh. Um, and I believe we've heard from all the neighborhood associations. Yeah present um, and I have collected their input along with the, the neighborhoods who weren't able to join us today. Um, so we can move into the second phase of actually placing our six, if that yeah. works. Yep, okay. I think I'm gonna, phase. I'm gonna do some quick PowerPoint magic and I'll be back. If right. whoever, it the artist from number seven is on. I hope you reapply next year. That I was excited about that piece. Well, it's, it's on. We need to add some more pads, some more rotating art pads. No doubt. Let's do it. <laughs> we have a lot of red pieces this year. That's yeah, true. Right. That's true. I once had an art professor who said, if you didn't know what to do, make it tiny, make it really big, or make it red. <laughs> well, this is a great problem to have. I remember that, I remember when we didn't have enough art pieces when we started with, right? And now it's, it's growing, which is a great problem to have when we, oh, we have too much art. What are we going to do? That's right, Cheryl. It's great a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Laura, you're muted if you're talking to us. Two and a half plus years in guys killing it um my powerpoint screen is going to look a little bit like throw up but we have the locations we have our six pieces uh, so then we can start divvying them out all right are you seeing my powerpoint again yes 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 beautiful um Again, sorry for the organized chaos. Um, based on what we have heard so far, um, 
the neighborhood input that we've received. Tank Park is has a preference for larger and broader lines in their artwork, um, something that's easily seen by cars. Um, and can you guys read the, I have the neighborhoods. Yes, yeah. we can read that. All right, okay. beautiful. So Tank Park wants big and beautiful, easily seen by cars. Um, Western Corridor was interested in artwork um, specifically A1, B1, um, B3, E, and F. Um, they are not interested in artwork from artist G. Um, Seymour Park had a preference for artwork from artist D, um, specifically D4. Uh, and East Shore Drive expressed interest in work from artist B. Uh, they were specifically interested in B2 through 4, um, weirdly enough, not B1, but they, they expressed interest in artist B's work overall. Um, so I would, I would suggest knowing that, um, I would maybe place artwork B for East Shore. Um, mm -hmm. Laura, are you able to move them around as you do this? I can. I won't be able to. I have to. I didn't. Oh, I see. Put I see. These together, so it's a little. <clears throat> please, do not judge my my You're doing great, Laura. My mad PowerPoint skills. This is art. Um, this is art. Yeah. I would move artwork B over to E Shore since they had interest in that artist's work mostly. Um, Seymour Park was interested in D4. I think that piece would be fantastic at that site, actually, since it's so open. Oh, they want to make that big. There we go. Um, and then Tank Park expressed interest in large pieces and Western Corridor was interested in um, A1, B1, E1, and F1. Um, so we have A1 oh. and E1. So Western Thanks. Corridor. That is, is so it's on a, a busy intersection, that site. Um, it's right across from a high school. There so, is a tree that kind of overhangs that site. Um, I would suggest E1 go there. E1? Okay. Yeah, it's bold and colorful and people would see it. That's, that's is that West High School? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, that, that would look, well, I think that would look really great there. And I think that would resonate with high school students. All right, E1. Yeah, but West we're school. wildcats over there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Jazz them um, up a bit. Right. And then the last neighborhood to provide input was, um, well, not the last one, but the last one that we haven't placed yet that's provided input was Tank Park. And they have a preference for larger and broader lines in their artwork, something that's easily seen by cars. And I Perfect. believe that was Shelby who provided input. Um, do you have anything else that you want to say? That, is that good for now? That's totally well, that's good. A, okay. Um, for me. What? Um, A1. A1 is remaining? Yep. And C2, right? C2. A1, C2. G2 is, is going to be lower to the ground. It will be something that I don't think is as good of a fit. Yeah. Um, I think A1 would suit better for the space than C2, but we would be happy to have either. Okay. Commissioners, you. do you have a preference? It's go day one. to Ms. Ms. Waller. All good. right. A1 over at Tank Park. Again, mad Photoshop skills. Um, so that leaves us with C2 and G2. Um, incendiary and Mr. Krabs. And the sites would be site one and site five, right? Yep. So site five is located um, near Liked Park. Um, it is a very busy area. Um, 
whereas RAP site one that is located next to, it's near an intersection, but there is a, a walking trail that goes past that is as a lot of walking traffic. Um, I'd like to suggest that G2 go to site one. Any other, I, I agree with that move. Does anyone else have any qualms about it or I see some thumbs up. That's good enough for me. Yeah, I live near there and I was just thinking the same thing. Plus my kids were like, hey, look, there's Mr. Crab. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So that leaves us with the following. At site one, Perkins Park area, we have Mr. Krabs. Um, site two, we have um, for Tank Park, Circumzoidal five. For site three in Western Corridor, we have El Torito. Site four, uh, for Seymour Park, we have Window. Site five, Fort Howard Park, um, or Fort Howard, we have Incendiary. And site six, we have Icosa. Are we good with the placement? We are good. Thank you, Laura. We need to make a motion to approve. I'd like to make a pieces. motion to approve these six pieces in these locations. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Okay, so moved. Wow, great job, Laura. That was super helpful the way you did that. The Zoom uh, thing is great, but it's tricky too. So thank you for bearing with my, <clears throat> save my PowerPoint. Um, thank you for bearing with my PowerPoint skills. All right, and, continuing. And to, I'm sorry, just to clarify, the floor is closed, right? I, I just lost track. Okay, good. Floor is closed. All right. Uh, so informational, um, Financial report? Yes. Can I get my PowerPoint up again? All right. As always, I am not a financial wizard. So I will go over the what I can go over. And if I screw up, Stephanie, please back me up. All right, so here's the financial report that was included in the agenda packet. Um, as usual, um, we have a lot of different buckets that our money comes in and some of those buckets are restricted for, for certain projects or for certain expenditures. So this is the overall view of those buckets um, as far as our beginning year balances in each bucket, if we've received any revenue, in those buckets and if we've made any purchases or payments out of those buckets resulting in the remaining balances. Um, looking deeper into the buckets, we have our community development block grant funds. Uh, that is where my position is paid out of. Um, we still have some money remaining um, from 2020 for our park shelter uh, mural program that we did We'll, we'll most likely need to be making some more um, payments out of that, uh, which I'll talk about more in the informational. Um, and then we also have our allocated amount for our shipyard underpass project, leaving us with a balance of zero to allocate. Um, within our city grants fund, this is money that's held at the city. Um, we have our rotating art grants that we've received um, so we actually have made a payment for an artist that has is leaving from from our previous selections this year to make way for the artwork that we just selected now. Um, and we had our yearly insurance payment to go out. So from the rotating art grant, we specifically have seven hundred thirty nine dollars and fifty seven cents left to spend in the rotating art item that we just selected. Selected up, that money will be going to to pay for artist stipends along with um, pulling ah geez sorry um, pulling money from from our friends money that we have easily accessibility to to pay the remainder of those artist payments from 
Um, I skipped over our National Endowment Grant. Um, we don't have this in hand just yet, but we have been uh, awarded it, and it is set aside for that shipyard project, uh, which we'll be supplementing with that block grant money up ahead. Also, if I if anyone has, feel free to feel free to stop me. Um, and then at the bottom of our city money in hand is our donation that we received from WPS. This is restricted money specifically for maintenance of Embark. Um, I did it again, sorry guys. Um, and then lastly is our friends account money. So we have uh, accounts with the Greater Green Bay Community Foundation um, and then also some money within our friends bank account that we, we can access if need be, um, but this money has, is not for emergencies or on something. Um, does anyone have any questions on the financial report? I Stephanie, did I question, forget anything? Laura. Yeah. Um, so I see the friends account is listed at the bottom, but then also friends money is under the city grants. Was that a grant awarded from the city to the friends? Can you, does That's a transfer that make sense? The What's account? the difference between friends money and friends account? Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes, I can. The friends money is money that was transferred out of the friends account into city accounts to be used, but it was Thank you. technically donated from the friends account. Thank you. That answers my question. Any other questions on the financial report? Well, what's have, the rotating arts grant? Like our this last round we're doing now for rotating arts. What is that total cost going to be, and what account is it coming from? For the, this year, it'll be it's 9000 total. OK. Oh, you're asking me quick math early in the morning. This is rough. Um, so roughly 9000 let's say. What account is that coming from? It will be coming from friends' money. Um, OK. So we'll most likely have to pull some from, from either our bank account or um, account okay we have enough to cover the outgoing artists because we split that payment into two years basically so we have enough to cover the outgoing artists and then we'll be pulling from most likely the friends account um, at the community foundation to to pay our incoming artists their first half and okay. then um, ideally Perfect. I will get some more grants to pay pay the second half, otherwise we'll be pulling more friends money for for that second payment. Okay. That was my so question. So so the, the the rotating arts program as as it stands currently draws from the friends account. It's not kind of neutral or net zero. Correct. I yeah, it, it would be helpful to see the the RAP program on, on the sheet somehow. Maybe moving forward if we could put that on there. Also, um, the annual grants program, are we, do we have any plans on starting that back up? That is something that we can discuss it. I mean, I can make a agenda item. Previous to, shortly before the pandemic started, um, the commissioners agreed to freeze the program until um, funds were replenished. Our funds have not been replenishing at a rate that I feel comfortable administering a program that we we don't have um, the ability to fund for the foreseeable future. Is, is the GBPAC in a position to receive ARPA dollars? The city has allocated a bucket for arts, culture, and tourism. Um, at this time, I don't know how those funds are being divvied out or allocated, but there, there is a bucket that has been set aside for arts, culture, and tourism. Okay, it, it would. I mean, the annual grants program is positioned perfectly, I think, as a uh, jewel to be invested into from some of those ARPA dollars. I mean, it's it's in, it's investing in artists, getting them moving, getting them creating artwork. Uh, so I think we should really reconsider, or not reconsider, but maybe just consider for the first time supplementing the annual grant program with some of those 
other opportunities of funding, such as ARPA, if we can. I, I agree. Think we, I'm, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say I'm, I'm having a lot of calls, uh, at folks asking, "Hey, when are you going to? When is that going to open up again?" So, um, there is there is a community call. Tim has his hand up, and then I have a question after him. Just out of curiosity, has the grant submission process concluded, or or has it yet start? Like, has it yet been opened to apply? Is there ways in which we can assist in that process? For the uh, which grant the 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 ARPA funds that you were talking about before tourism arts and culture that were allocated by the city is that process already been shut or is that door still open? No, that door is open yet, and I think that's I think it's a matter of Laura and I and maybe Alex sitting down with the mayor and asking if there are some opportunities to make these requests because I agree I think this could be used for ARPA dollars in that bucket that's set aside for tourism and art. Um, so I, I think that's an ask we would make through our department. So we'll, I, I guess we'll work on that. I will tell you as the board that we are working on that now. In fact, Laura's even come up with some numbers and what we could look at making an ask for. So, yeah, Great. and we we discussed too that the the program most likely is going to need to be adjusted a bit so that it fits with that tourism focus. So. It, it might look like annual grant program 2.0 um, so that it, it's for the ARPA funds. So to follow up on that same question, in this rotating, if this rotating art series be part of that appeal, has there been a consideration before to reach out to uh, other art organizations either within the state or the region or you know across the country to try and maybe do an art swap or some sort of destination piece that would allow a little bit more traffic in to see something they may not otherwise see. I know we have a lot of uh, wonderful art exhibits, uh, specifically like you know, there are through the colder opportunities that you know bring artists from all around. Is there a way in which we could allocate a space for maybe like a touristic piece that could be part of the rotating six? I think. Um, correct me, but I might not be fully understanding. You want like a larger piece um, that's I'm kind saying, of... Oh, sorry, like aspirationally, we have the six plots, right? So if we were to apply for this funding to say we have this rotating art series that changes every year, but if one of them was allocated towards an ex established art organization from across somewhere else to try and apply to the tourism aspect of this, like this is a piece of the Kohler, it's a piece from the Frist, it's a piece from where it has more of a tourism tie, where of the six panels, you work collaboratively with an outside art organization to try and bring that in to maybe leverage that as an opportunity within the grant request to say there's a specific mindset that we're going to cross promote with another organization and try to extend for a tourism impact on this one destination piece. And then we'll additionally have five you know, artists that could be from across the, the country or, or local as we saw today. Yeah, I think we could explore that. Um, the ARPA funds, it's three, we have three years to spend it, correct, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're currently set for the next year, but I think that could be, be something to be explored for the 23-24 the season. Or we could also explore the potential to have like Cheryl said, another another location added on or right. um, expanding the program to incorporate further locations and have one of those fit that purpose of the, the partnerships. That's what I was thinking. Like we, we in, initially intended to expand this program like from the outset. So this could be a good opportunity to potentially do that. Um, also, Tim, I think what you're talking about could be slightly different than a rotating arts program the way it is right now and could potentially uh, be eligible within the annual grants program, which if you're not familiar with is uh, another program that the GBPAC puts on. Do you, are you familiar with that, Tim? I know you're- I am also not and would like to know about that. Same, yeah, I'm not familiar, but let's know. Um, well, Laura, do, go ahead. Our annual grant program was a grant that we offered $1,500. Uh, it's a match grant 
um, but it had to be for public art endeavors, um, whether that's theater performances, uh, neighborhood sculptures, mural work. Um, it had to fit the, the criteria of easily accessible and free, no barrier to entry. Um, we, we handed out a number of grants um, and then because the nature of the PAC's funding starting out, we were funded through stadium tax fund um, and that, that money was not replenishing since we were working from, from a drawdown bucket. And I would add that it was 1500, but the idea was that we would, we were trying to find sources to, so that it would be much, much more than, than that. It would be not really one-offs, but kind of fitted pieces that really gave us the, uh, the freedom to fund public art in many different ways, not just the rotating arts program, but we could fund uh, like a play that was outside for uh, five weeks in a row or something like that, or we could fund sculptures or murals or uh, installations, things like that. Good addition. Then the asks would come just sporadically and they would come to the PAC board. So it was just kind of an open, it was always open. So people could be able to prove it monthly. So it wasn't like a once a year thing. It was just kind of an ongoing thing. Yeah. And probably in hindsight, since we'd had so much success with making the uh, rotating arts program predictable, like I, we'd probably do something like that. Cheryl, wouldn't you think we'd probably change it to like a twice a year or three times a year because that seems to have streamlined Laura's work yep. and uh, yeah okay so I if we do say, resurrect it I, if we, yeah if we resurrect it I would I would like to implement some sort of schedule <laughs> and it makes it easier for you guys to when when you're reviewing pieces <clears throat> to not have that fear of like oh but like the next like great Van Gogh Picasso piece might be like just around the corner so we might want to save our money here um, it really helps you guys kind of analyze directly what's in front what's what's happening any other questions on report what does arpa stand for american rescue plan act thank you no worries there's a lot of abbreviations and acronyms all right anything else Beautiful. I will stop sharing so that we can see one another. Then I think we're good to move on to our next agenda item in the informational category, uh, which is coordinators report and project updates. So a lot is happening. Um, and thank you guys for, again, taking the time to review everything and, and come ready to, to knock out a discussion this morning. And we have six new pieces of art that are going up in six neighborhoods, which is always a good thing. So thank you guys for that work. Uh, uh, first off, we have our shipyard underpass mural project, which I had mentioned in the financial report. Uh, it sent that call out in February. Um, it will be closing uh, May 5th. So next week it will be closing. We have a selection committee put together that is going to be reviewing the initial applications. Um, we requested basically um, artist qualifications. Um, the selection committee will be reviewing those, those qualifications and submissions and narrowing it down to um, eight artists at most. From the eight, they will actually be developing a concept for our site specifically, and then the selection committee will meet again to narrow it down to at most four artists at this point. And then um, the timeline is looking uh, most likely like June, um, but that might get shifted a bit, um, but having that artist selected and ready, artists selected and ready to rock. Um, following June and then all of the additional approvals needs to go through um, RDA. Um, and actually I should mention that too, since RDA is, is the funder, majority funder, 
of the project, um, the selection committee's recommendations will be going to RDA, and then it will be coming to you guys as as a, a informational. Um, but we have um, a number of um, we have Kent on the selection committee and a number of others, I believe, that are um, professional artists and and are going to be reviewing the the submissions and taking the time to accurately see what we have, which I'm excited to see what all comes in eventually. Uh, next up is our um, park shelter project. So as I had mentioned in the um, financial update, we have a bit of money set aside from our park shelter mural project that we completed last year. Um, unfortunately, two of our pieces have uh, been vandalized. So I'm working with those artists on coordinating repairs and payments for those. So bit of a bummer, but um, overall, I think the, the park shelter murals have been very successful and, and I enjoy seeing them when I go around. Next up is um, our Green Bay Artist Registry and Spark GGB. Um, I think a number of you are already aware of Spark GGB. Um, and I think I had pushed it out to you guys a while back, but as the Public Arts Commission's involvement in Spark GGB, um, part of our responsibility is trying to gather as much artist input as possible. So we want to collect uh, our artist information and creative information within the area, whether you're a, a painter, a musician, a theater performer, um, someone who really enjoys carving spoons in your garage, whatever it might be, um, we would like to try and capture as many of the so that they can be involved in the Spark GGB process. So I will be sharing our residency link again. It's a pretty easy form on the city's website um, and it's the, the it forms the registry that um, I email out our calls to. Um, Katie. Mark, Mark, um is there information publicly available about how that that registry is safeguarded or and or shared? We have a there's a short paragraph on the city's website within the artist registry page. I believe that specifies further. Thank you. Um, and then while we're talking about Spark GGB, um, I wanted to bring it to the commission's attention that. Um, I, I sit on the steering committee along with a number of other members here. Um, our June 22nd meeting for the steering committee conflicts with this meeting. So um, just to kind of put it on your radar, we, we might be canceling our, our June commission meeting or we might be rescheduling that um, just so you all are aware. Are there any questions or comments on the coordinator update. Just that you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Alex. All right. With that said, um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 25th, 2022. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Laura. Great work. <clears throat>